Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. You want to know why? Well, because I'm proud of one of my subscribers, that's why. Um, but first, I'm going to thank all of my new subscribers. I had many of them. I appreciate you all. But I need to point out two in particular because two weeks ago I did a... Uh, a, a deal to see who would win uh, for some free plants. Um, right after I made that video, we went into a major deep freeze. It was negative, you know, 20 to 30 degrees for two weeks straight. I couldn't even go outside. I, we were having um, hypothermia, you know, warnings. Like if you're outside for longer than 10 minutes, you just, I don't know, I freeze into a block of ice. Freeze! That's what I tell my kids anyway. I tell them that if they make weird faces, because sometimes they like to go and do that, and I'm like, hey man, you do that and the weather changes, it's going to stay that way forever. But uh, yeah, I was waiting for that to blow over. Uh, there was no way I was going to put plants, you know, and send them to anyone knowing that they were just going to be a block of ice when they got there, regardless if there was a heat, heat, heating pad in there in any way. Uh, so I let my son... Uh, do the drawing, and it was uh, Wowser back. So uh, I will be in contact with you, sir. You know who I am, and um, uh, I'll let you pick out a few plants. I mean, I've got lots that need to get propagated. So um, we'll talk on the phone. You just kind of give me an idea of what kind of stuff you're interested in, and uh, we'll get that out to you, man. So congratulations. All right, and so the shout-out goes to, I'm going to be putting up a picture. Bam! You see that amazing aquascape? Expert-level aquascape? That is one of my subs. That person's name is G Family. They have been following me for nine months, and uh, she has thoroughly followed all of my step-by-step -step tutorials. And this is a result. She started a 55 gallon tank uh, four months ago, uh, around the same time that I had happened to get, a, it was a coincidence, I, I had a 55 gallon tank that I was working, and she just followed me all the way through. And look at where what she got. You know, she followed what everything that I said perfectly. Now, yes, you get instructions and you get help sometimes from other people, but it's not like I was there with my hands helping her do that, you know, putting it together. She did that herself. Okay. Um, and look at this tank. It's absolutely stunning. Look at how green and red and vibrant all the plants are. I, I mean, it, it looks gorgeous. I mean, those are happy plants. And she followed my dirt tutorials. Dirt don't lie. Plants want dirt. They don't want a $300 bag of ADA aqua soil. It's not necessary because they don't grow in aqua soil out in the world. They grow in cold, hard, dirt, earth. So I'm going to leave that up. And while we congratulate her, yeah, look at that. The method work. All right. So, um, and she's going to start making videos talking about how she pulled that off. Um, so, uh, while we look at that, I'll then just kind of show you around the tanks I have in here that I've been running for a couple years now, off dirt, and uh, just kind of highlight some of the uh, animals that I've got, because I've got all kinds. Um, mini Tetras, I love Tetras, I got pea puffers, um, shrimp of course, and then I'll be talking about what I've decided is going to be going to my 55 almost five months later, super stoked. So, give me a minute. I will keep G Family's picture up, and I'm sure she'll comment. And you all can feel free to ask her questions as to what all she did to get it looking that way. And uh, uh, super happy. I do love to hear follow up stories from my subs. People who check in and have questions, hey, you know, some of them I'm just like, hey, here's my phone number. Let's get on the phone and troubleshoot your problem. And I have with several of my subs. And 
these videos, I'm not here trying to gain a financial income from YouTube. This is an extension of my hobby because I love it so much. And when I finally started doing things correctly and I learned everything about every plant imaginable, you know, and started having success with that first and then started with, um, you know, fish and crustaceans, you know, uh, shellfish and all of that. You know, I, I knew that when I started, I said to myself, if I can't be successful with plants in an aquascape, how can I ex how can I expect to be successful with inhabitants? You know, because I'm trying to we're, we're we're creating recreating nature for these animals. What they want, they don't want a plastic castle that blows bubbles out the windows, or uh, a submersible um, submarine dude. You know, blowing bubbles out of his hat and you know, and a bunch of plastic seaweed in there. They don't come from those environments. Plus, plastic can injure your fish and just what like we don't throw plastic out in the ocean why would you throw plastic in your fish tank okay uh, not only can it harm them if they brush against it but uh, secondly if they happen to ingest a piece of it what do you think is gonna happen they eat a piece of a live plant they'll be okay they get a piece of acrylic crud down their throat boom it you know X is over the eyes Blech. All right, so I'll leave her picture up. Take a look at it. I'm so proud of that aquascape. And uh, we'll go around. There are fish tanks out throughout the house. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm okay. I promise. And uh, we'll take a quick look at the uh, tanks and do an updates on all of mine. Because I have some brackish water tanks. And uh, anyway, so see you in a minute. Bye-bye. All right, so... This is a 40 gallon, and I actually did create a new type of guppy, which is right here. Now, these are cobra guppies. Now, right here, I have made the first cobra sword tail. See how it has that? Oh, it bolted. See how they all have round tails? And then right here, created a sword tail, which is common. But I have yet to ever see a uh, cobra sword, sword tail being sold anywhere or even seen it through Google. I started off with flame tail endlers and crossed them with cobra guppies. And that's what I got. Now these are my neon uh, black tetras. I have these in here. They're my cleanup crew. These guppies start getting out of control. These dudes will start eating all the babies. Yes, sad face for the, for the fallen. But... Um, it's just the way of things. The guppies couldn't keep up with their own kids. I'm okay, you know, one or two surviving here and there. Sometimes I see uh, if the baby wants to survive in this tank, they need to get in this guppy grass and just essentially not leave for three months, you know. Um, but, uh, so this is a uh, guppy grass that we got going on here. Several types of Anubias, uh, some jungle valicinaria uh, growing back there is a uh, golden Anubias. Uh, and of course, this is Dragonstone, Mornana Anubius. Uh, this is a Rosette Sword. Um, and then back here, I have a uh, uh, Cryptocorn Parva, which, as you can see, gets much larger than what people think. I have a whole bunch of Cryptocorn uh, Parva going on here. All up front. I love Cryptocorns. More Valisanaria all the way through the back there. And then on that back log. That would be some of my, um, well, come on now. Oh, yeah, the plant that I hate, yeah. Java Fern. Yeah, great. So that's what we have in here. Now, let's take a spin around to the pea puffer tank. Where are you, pea puffers? Where are you at? Pea puffer, pea puffer. Oh, he's back there tripping. Let me get him up here. Here we go. Anyway, he's flipping out. Come on. Probably putting my poker in there didn't help. There he is. Pea puffer. Yep, there's two in here. 
It's not really a good idea to mix pee puffers with anything else. They're extremely territorial, even against each other. And although I only have two in here, I have... Oh, there's the other one. I have seen them fight over snails. They are carnivorous. They want live prey like snails or bloodworms. Um, this tank is filthy, and I'm going to explain why um, there's so much, I mean, dirt on all of this cryptocorns, a lot of floaters. Pea puffers, when they sleep, and I've tried to stop them from doing this, uh, I, I tried to put a layer of pebbles because I thought it'd be too heavy for them to be able to dig below it. I already had my blasting sand in my soil, and they still finagle. They like, when they sleep, they'll barrel down into the sand, and in the morning I'll turn the light on, and they'll go, Bloop! and just explode out of there. It's pretty funny. All right. Now, this is another 40-gallon breeder that I'm really happy about. In here, the reds, these are Sarpe Tetras. These are albino uh, glow light tetras, and then those are glow light tetras with the orange stripe. Uh, up here, I have a bunch of uh, undulatas, and uh, I have some myoya growing up in front. There are some uh, retro spirals trying to grow there. Really tall uh, bronze cryptocorns growing back there. And then on here, uh, some more java fern. And, of course, uh, jungle valicinaria going around the outer edges. Uh, sorry about the glare. Um, and I have, I also had some danios in here. Where are you at, danios? There they are. Zebra danios, zipping around. zippity da boop boo All right. And then, of course, my shrimp tank. Yeah, it's only, oh, ooh, look, there's a baby right there. Little baby, little baby shrimps. There's hundreds in here. I started off with 12, and uh, they're just, oh, ooh, another little baby. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is Subwasser Tank. All my babies will be inside here. There's a baby there. And then they come out and they start eating. Here's one. Here's another. Here's another. This is what I was talking about. Babies grouping around. I leave this biofilm right here in this area on purpose because that's all babies can eat. Um, you know. Uh, so in here I have a carpet of uh, Sagittaria. And then uh, let's take a creep around this corner back here. See what we got. And one sword plant in the rear. Topped it off with a bunch of frog bit. And then back over here, my wandering Jew is doing great. A bunch of new growth happening. It took a lot to... Uh, man, this... <laughs> this uh, devil's ivy... It's, it, it, I mean, it's ridiculous. I keep having to pull... The roots are, are insane on this thing. Um, and then in the back, I had grown a patch of retro spirals, which are coming back full force. Some uh, myoya uh, growing up front. Whole bed of cryptocorn carpet happening. Some water lettuce up on top. And what I'm going to be turning this into, because I have so much wood... I realized that I could keep my carbonate hardness at zero. Now, why would I want to keep my carbonate hardness at zero? Well, because there is a type of shrimp that needs to have extremely acidic water. Like, they want a pH of 5.5, carbonate hardness of zero, and a general hardness of four, which is hard to pull off naturally. A lot of people want to buy the powders to do that, and I have almost nailed it. Right, everything is exactly right except the general hardness is still too high. It's still at seven, so I'm still letting the wood do some more more of its magic. Uh, but what I'm going to be putting in here, I already know, and it's going to be a Tiger Galaxy shrimp tank. I'm going to be cross breeding them uh, with uh, Stardust to try to create Galaxy Stardust um, 
caridinas. Now, caridinas, you can mix colors. You you can mix blues and reds and make purples and all of that. They're they're different from neos, but they're also much more difficult to take care of. And I did not want to make a mistake. I this has been running for over five months, and you know I wanted a very well mature tank. And you do if you're going to do caridinas, don't try to put one in put them in there in your first month. You need it to go for months because you need all this fogginess that has to be there. The, your shrimp are dependent on fogginess on your glass. That is biofilm. Their babies have to have that. You know, so pellets and everything, that works great for the adults and the juveniles, but for the newborns it does not. And then, of course, I gave them a patch of Wasser Tang so they can have their babies in there. And when I start getting those in and putting them in there, we'll start having some Caradina Shrimp Talk. Thank you so much for watching. Congratulations to subscriber Wowzerback on the free plants. Um, I will contact you soon. You have my number. And uh, congratulations again to G Family, who made a wonderful, wonderful tank and who has been keeping me up to date with it. And it looks absolutely fabulous. I hope you all have a fantastic day. If you're down in the dumps, you feel terrible. I'd like to remind you that the feeling will pass, so get up and do something about it. We'll catch you next time.